My name is Eyal Steiner. You're probably wondering what type of a name is Eyal. So when I get my coffee, I say uh, latte for Alex, because no one gets that name right, just to clarify. Um, I'm Israeli, so that's why I have a bit of the Borat accent. Uh, so if you're wondering what that's that, where does he come from? Uh, my wife gets the other way. She gets, uh, oh, you have a Wonder Woman accent. So um, I, get, I think she got a better um, Hollywood uh, character. So yeah, I'm the managing director of Outbrain in Asia Pacific. I started Outbrain in this part of the world about five years ago. Uh, Outbrain is an American company with, a, with our R&D based in Israel. Um, we operate in a really interesting space. I'm gonna share a little bit about what we do and how brands uh, leverage uh, to what we do. I'll tie that into the seven seconds. I think that the seven second mark um, is really brutal. And uh, it's brutal because when you interrupt, that's probably the most you can interrupt. And that's my, I don't know how this seven, seven, seven second benchmark came to be, but a big part of where we operate, a big part of what we do with clients is winning attention at a much longer, at a very different scale. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to win attention um, in the digital space, uh, how to earn the attention of consumers in the digital space. And it's a, a lot of it is creativity, but a lot of it is also being polite and moving away from intrusive advertisement. And I'm gonna tie that into how to, uh, to tie that all the way into uh, concrete results. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna try and do all that in 15 minutes. So let's see if, uh, if I can. More than seven seconds. More than seven seconds. Uh, yeah, if I lost you after seven seconds, I do apologize. So there's a blur about me, but trust me, it's not interesting. So let's move right, uh, right in. Uh, so this is me. Um, basically, I'm not a marketeer. So I have that luxury of saying, I don't know your industry very well. I'm a technology person. I worked all my life in technology companies and Outbrain is very much a technology company. Uh, but we work in the marketing space. So um, um, in the past five years, that's what I've been doing. And now I lead the entire region for Outbrain in uh, Asia Pacific. Um, most marketers in the digital space use predominantly these two, uh, search and social, Google and Facebook. Obviously, these are, this is the, uh, the duopoly. The space that we operate is very different. Uh, if you think outside of so search and social, a lot of people spend a lot of time consuming content, but that's an environment that's pretty broken, and we'll talk about why in a second, but that's the, the space that we work in, and we call that space discovery. So discovery is when you're consuming content on publisher websites, when you're in uh, news feeds on the MSN homepage or on the, uh, the new browser for MSN or Edge. Um, you have content feeds and that's where we, where we play. The reason this clicker is, I'm gonna do a lot of these, so I do apologize. Uh, this clicker is probably, uh, battery's a bit weak. Um, the reason why Facebook and Google work is because these platforms are, the marketing, the advertising in them is non-intrusive. It's not, you don't get pop-ups, you don't get, uh, you, um, a, a lot of what they're trying to do is really align who you are, what you're doing right now, and how do we bring the best, uh, the best information to you. So when you're searching, if I'm searching flights to Hong Kong, it doesn't matter that Honda is now trying to get their search result in front of me. It would never appear. It has to be aligned with what I'm doing right there. Display advertisement through that lens is not really that. And the re big reason why native works so well is because if you're using a platform that really learns consumers, understand what they do, you have a chance of aligning and finding the audience that, have a ch that uh, is interested in your, uh, potentially interested in your product. So I think that Outbrain is the first one that basically started the, con the concept of native discovery, content marketing, uh, and that's the space we've been operating. And I think that part of the reason why I hope, I think, from what I see from the numbers month on month in the reports, people like using Outbrain is because it's not intrusive and it allows you to bring people in. And why is that important? Because in that environment where people are consuming content, if you think about it, it's, it's gotten really hard to, consume, to win consumer attention. There's uh, a lot of fraud as a marketeer, there's viewability concerns, there's transparency around where are my ads appearing, um, <laughs> and there's now ad blocking, uh, more and more on desktop, and, um, and a lot of that is happening in mobile as well. All these things, even if you pass through all these hurdles, even if you're an amazing marketeer and you got in front of the right audience and it was in the view and you know it was in a brand safe environment, then you're, be you're facing the best uh, ad blocker of all, which is the human brain. And that's why there's absolutely no conversation happening ever that says, dude, have you seen this banner by so-and-so brand? There's just no conversation like that. Uh, because we're completely blind, we completely train our brains to ignore anything that we perceive as intrusive advertisement. But that's not the case in search. Some of the best search results are promoted. That's not necessarily the, the case in social. 
because they do a lot of, use a lot of data and personalization to make it relevant to me. And that's why search and social, if you think about it, are not push platform, they're pull platform. And that's why a lot of marketers are using Outbrain because in the content engagement moment on websites, it's an opportunity to pull consumers in. And that's what's uh, driving a lot of uh, brands to use Outbrain. Now, when we started, I think that one of the main things that we align really well with is the rise of content marketing. And we've done an exceptional job at educating the market that Outbrain is a content vehicle. And that's why I think that Outbrain predominantly, for those who have heard about us, you probably know us as, ah, oh, you know, con we've got content marketing, we're producing content on a blog or, I uh, you know, through social influencers or uh, uh, with a publisher, and now we need audience, and that's a great vehicle to get uh, uh, people to discover uh, our content. And that's great, and we've grown the business in the past four, four and a half, uh, four or five years, purely at the back of the rise of content marketing. But when we look under the hood in terms of our, in, our own, uh, in our own systems and we look at what marketeers are doing, we see more and more uh, of the, uh, the brands using Outbrain moving into measuring the results as direct response. And that to me is a surprise, but also when, when I thought about it, it's not that uh, of a surprise because marketeers, brand marketeers are under a lot of pressures to, to show results. So more and more in the past uh, few years, we're seeing campaigns in Outbrain, a lot of them for content, but a lot of them are not, that are trying to actually acquire consumers online in the discovery moment. And that's fascinating, and that's the area that I wanted to share with you a little bit, because I think that's uh, a really interesting uh, intersection of two marketing disciplines. So what is happening here, and why is that happening? So on one hand, we have performance marketeers, and they're facing rising costs on search and social, leading to the fact that in order to find more consumers, you need to invest more and you're getting diminishing returns. So the ROI equation is starting to break. And also, you, the search is very good, for instance, in finding people at the absolute end of the journey when they're searching for something. But how do you find them above? How do you find them in the middle of the funnel when they're beginning their journey or maybe before they're about to begin their journey? So the need to own the pre-search moment, that's what's driving a lot of performance marketeers to branch and look for avenues outside of search and, uh, search and social. On the other hand, we've got a lot of brand marketeers, a lot of them are experimenting with content marketing, but they're under a lot of legitimate pressure, by the way, to show results, prove ROI, move beyond the look at how many people we got and look at how many seconds on the page they were, show me that you're sold, show me that you are driving, putting bums on seat, you're getting my hotel rooms booked, that you're uh, getting, uh, getting me good leads. And that's, uh, um, that's what these guys need to do. So you have two discipline, branding discipline, which has always been around interruption uh, and impressions and views and performance marketers all coming together and discovery is a really comfortable intersection point, the space that we operate. Because this is not the space of people who are searching with full intent and by the way, probably in many cases, they know what they're looking for. Into, uh, um, into branding, which is about sprinkling uh, top of the funnel. So I'm gonna walk you through what, uh, what that looks like. And here's some examples of brands already today using Outbrain, not for content distribution and branding. These brands, Kmart, GE, Finder, Babbel, they're using Outbrain, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through some examples, to basically drive results. So Kmart, this is an e-commerce activity. And I'll, we'll, I'll show you what that looks like. GE, it's a lead generation activity. Finder, it's, a, um, uh, it's prospecting for people who are looking for credit cards. And Babbel is an app download activity. They leverage Outbrain as another acquisition channel, which is counterintuitive. And by the way, if you asked me about two years ago, are you guys involved in this? I would tell you, no, no, we're not, this is not our space. We're not, this is probably the space for Google. So what are they doing there and why is this happening? So if you think about, uh, here, t take a, uh, a brand that works with us like Macy's, they obviously work in search, they obviously work in social, but they're now starting to use Outbrain as part of their acquisition mix. And when you look at what they do, when someone is searching for some address or a particular model, they're using Google to basically drive them to a landing page to drive that acquisition. But also they want to inspire people to think about Macy's and to potentially shop Macy's before they search for the sum address. So this is where they produce content and uh, about uh, what the, the top, 10, uh, top the ten, 10 trends guaranteed to rock festival season. This is targeting specifically young demographic going to rock festivals and the catalog is there in a storified manner. 
So we call this a content landing page. But make no mistakes, they measure it exactly like a regular landing page. Uh, it, did it lead to e-commerce? Did they shop eventually? On the page directly. So here's an a local example, if you will. This is Meyer Emporium. Uh, Emporium is uh, produced, I think, by Bauer Magazine. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe they, uh, they shifted. But that's a, a Meyer digital uh, um, um, asset. They have stories there, but immediately below you can shop the story. So you see how you leverage interest and in trying to inspire people to take an action through content. Now this is before someone searches for uh, the, uh, the dress that they know that they want to buy and they're just now looking for the lowest price. This is basically someone, hey, you know, I actually have to go uh, on an event this weekend uh, and suddenly you serendipity find something um, uh, that inspires you and you look at the range and potentially shop for the range. Uh, here's another example for tourism. This is uh, Tourism Ireland working with us, showing different itineraries for uh, discovering Ireland. Um, and, but at the end of the day, it's not about the itineraries and eyeballs. It's about, are you booking now? Are we driving leads to our partners? So you can see how content and discovery can actually leverage, you can leverage that to actually drive real results and not just eyeballs and time on site and engagement. We can work with any landing page. Don't get me wrong, we've done a few of those activities where we take a landing pages that, that uh, brands use on search and you can work, and, and, it, and it can work, don't get me wrong. But what we see that works better and drives more and more conversion is that instead of just lo looking at a landing page that gives you immediately what you need, here's the information, here's how much it costs, call us, book online, and so on and so forth, you can take assets that the brand have and create a slightly different landing page, which is a bit softer, a bit more, with a bit more product information, and then leverage it. So this is a landing page, but the same product have a YouTube video, and you can append to that uh, a lead generation form, you can append to that the calls to action, a bit more product information, a bit more if you want to download the app, and more pro product benefits. So suddenly you have a page that looks a lot more informative as opposed to a salesy. And that's the approach that I think works really well with, uh, with what we do in Outbrain. And it's drives results. So again, I'm not, um, um, if, if you're really interested, you can go on our website. There's a barrage of case studies of how through Outbrain you can acquire customers and many times it's cheaper and the ROI is better. But uh, again, two years ago, I probably wouldn't have been able to say with confidence that this is what we do and this is an interesting and exciting opportunity. Um, in terms of how we operate, just to give you a little bit of behind the scene, as a marketing, uh, as an, uh, marketing technology, advertising technology company, we are essentially uh, learning each and every one of you. So the, the, the Outbrain machine, essentially when you are online, when you are reading The Guardian or uh, news.com.au or CNN, we see how you traverse with content. We see how people are, that are similar to you traversing with content. And we know, just like Google knows what you're searching, we know what you're interested in and what you're reading in. And you didn't sign up to Outbrain, you didn't ask for this, but because we see the, everyone across the web, we know what, uh, uh, and we have an interest profile for probably every, each and every one of you. Sounds spooky, I know, but don't worry, we don't know anything about you as an individual. We just are interested, we just learn how and what you do and what you're interested in. That allows us when we start a campaign to basically target an audience based on their interest rather than their demographic. And from there, basically, we see what you're doing on the page and eventually uh, uh, keep optimizing from there on. So the process that we operate is always take, work with your creative, run a campaign, run the analysis and go back. And a very iterative uh, process, probably every two, three weeks, we, we help, uh, we drive an incremental iteration and try and uh, introduce changes. So that's the process of working with Outbrain, but it's a self-learning machine. So I guess that what I'm here to tell you is that it's great that you're working with Google and Facebook and that's absolutely an opportunity but there's an, uh, an untapped opportunity for acquisition through Outbrain, and that's a space that I think a lot of brands are looking into right now, and it's fascinating, and that's uh, the space that we operate in. So I hope you find that useful, and I think we're off to the next presenter. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Oh, sorry, are we doing questions? You can clap, it's okay, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You're too kind. <laughs>